I've been thinking about this for so long, I've always wanted to test myself with different crank lengths. An improvement of uh, 50%, so which is quite a lot. I don't have to go to the gym anymore. Is a bike fit really that important? My last bike fit was six years ago on my very first carbon road bike. And since then, I've been guessing my saddle height just by feel. Even though I've been riding countless of different bikes and all these bikes had different sizing and geometry, I had no issues whatsoever. With my goal of a top five in the Haute Route Alps this year, I wanted to optimize my bike for performance and make sure I would have the best setup I possibly can. So my, my sail is going backwards. Well, I've already put it backwards a while ago. I think it's a classic example of you think it's okay, but it's actually not. And I'm not having issues, but it can be a lot better. What's up guys, what's up cycling fanatics? I'm at Real Racer Motion here in Belgium with my new BH Ultralight. And it's finally time to get a good bike fit. So this is the, the actual place where they do the, the bike fits. I'm meeting with Sven. And he's done bike fits on guys like uh, Wout van Aert and uh, Remco Evenepoel. So I guess he knows what he's doing, right? I am Van den Houten Sven, the head bike fitter at Bike Race in Motion. The most common mistake I think is that people always think that a bike fit is not necessary. They only come here when they have physical issues and only then they see the value of a good bike fit. Hey, good morning. Hi, Jasper. How are you? Yeah, good. I'm very curious about the bike today. So you can change our clothes. Yeah. I'm gonna put the bike on the trainer and then we can start the bike fitting session. I'm gonna put on this funky bib shorts. It's got all these holes so he can cover me completely with markers and then we have a 3D image of my whole body during the fit. Ta-da! Check it out. Feel a bit naked. <laughs> Every bike fitter decides his own protocol but we decided here to always start with a static bike fit. It gives us an idea of the measurements of the person's body. And it's always useful to, to, to have a sort of conversation with your client uh, during your static bike fit. The base of uh, 3D motion capturing, it is putting of all the dots onto your body. The most important thing is that you put left and right at the same anatomical spot. The markers send an infrared signal to the cameras and the software turns it into an automatic 3D model. It feels like an examination. <laughs> Feels like my whole body's been checked, which is actually a good thing. Uh, like, like I said, I've never done this before. I always tell people to do a bike fit. Like when they come to me like, oh, I don't know my bike uh, frame size or uh, I have an injury here and there. I'm like, okay, have you done a bike fit? And now it's finally time to practice what I preach and to do this bike fit. So yeah, super curious what the, what the results are gonna be. With your first run, we, we saw that your saddle was too much forward, which gives you too much pressure on your uh, upper legs and too much pressure on your lower back. So I think it is best to start first f with uh, adapting the saddle position yeah. to the most optimal position. Then uh, in the end change cleats and uh, shoes. Sounds good. Optimal sounds better than not optimal. My sail is going backwards. Well, I've already put it backwards a while ago. I figured the, the bike was a bit short, so I just put my sail back, like a centimeter and a half or whatever. And then I did the two, 300 kilometers uh, atop the tour. I just rode my bike, no problem. But now Sven is telling me it needs to go back even further. So I think it's a classic example of, you think it's okay, but it's actually not. And I'm not having issues, but it can be a lot better. So even though I felt fine on the bike, there turned out to be quite a bit of improvement possible. During the initial test, Sven explained what I was looking at on the screen and how he interprets the data. The sensors and the cameras generate a 3D image and a stability report showing the lateral movement of certain parts in your body, especially the pelvis, the hip, the knee area are key points we would take into account and had room for improvement in my case. Your initial clit position was too far backwards. It, it will give you more stability 
but the disadvantage uh, is that you have less flexibility in your ankle movement. So we changed your clear position more forward. The advantage of that was that you had more pressure on your, on your knee joint. And so that was the first big improvement of your knee trace that became more straight. The knee trace is the path that your knee follows. And the increased stability will mean less movement in the left and right direction during this pedal stroke. This can be seen in the stability report by comparing the lateral movement of different points of your body during the measurement. Okay, what's next? <laughs> Baseline is every bike fit is individual. In your case, I saw that your pelvic area was a bit moving too much. It was uh, worth it to change to shorter cranks. I took a shorter crank set, 172.5, because the standard cranks of the BH is 175, which is relatively long. So we're going to see what the, the, the effect of that is going to be. Dude, this, I've, I've been thinking about this for so long, I've always wanted to test myself with different crank length. I think this is the best way to show it, because you can literally see on the screen where the dots are going and if there's a real difference or not. So, moment of truth. I'm going to be very nervous. We're going to be two points above. So, your and then this. Ja, bovenaan is wel dag en nacht verschil. Less movement in my pelvis and uh, more consistent movement in my ankles. Correct? Is it? Yes, yeah. correct. And you can see it on the screen, so more green numbers is better in this uh, stability report. And you can see the difference between before and after the cranks. There's less movement in my hips than before. We saw an improvement of uh, 50%, so which is quite a lot. The advantage with shorter cranks is, is that you, you give yourself more flexibility in the hip area. With shorter cranks also, your, uh, your circle is smaller and you will ride more efficient as well. It is not common sense that for every client it, it will be an improvement. You can only do the measurement and you can see the outcome. Where is the limit? If, it, if I would put in 170 or 165 cranks, would that make it even better? Or do you think this might already be the optimum? So you can only do it by testing and then measure. Shorter cranks. In my case, less fatiguing. Interesting stuff. I need to buy new cranks now. <laughs> what, what if we do this with a high power? Will we see a difference? We can test it. Okay, okay. let's try at 400. Symmetry is so, so important because it uh, gives you an indication of your efficiency. So the more symmetric you are, you have a, a higher chance to, to ride more efficient. But more important, your chance of having injuries decreases. The most important is that you make the same movement left and right. The perfect motion. An egg. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the ankle motion, look on the screen. And the left is a little bit uh, rotating backwards. Backwards, yeah. yeah it's only very, very small, My very small difference. Next was the cockpit. Ever since I had the ultralight, I thought I needed to get a longer stem. But now that my saddle went more backwards, this wasn't needed at all. Sven made slight changes to my shifter position, which would hopefully solve a light discomfort that I sometimes have in my hands on longer rides. I could actually not imagine that this little change would also further improve the stability of different points throughout my body. But it did, as we saw my shoulders and pelvis get more stable, showing more green numbers on this stability report. The next thing we were going to look at were my shoes and insoles. Uh, so we're making custom insoles for the shoes. The normal insoles of the Bond shoes are pretty flat and they've already came up with this uh, extra arc so uh, I've been riding these insoles for a while and it, I really feel the extra support. But as Sven told me, there's, there's no specific shape in the front of the, of the sole. And that's what this system is really accommodating. So we're going to see uh, when it comes out, I'm going to stand on these soles with my feet. We're going to push in my, my feet in the soles, which makes the shape. So far, I ha haven't had any trouble with the with the bone shoes, but maybe we can improve some stuff. I don't have to go to the gym anymore.
We've got custom insoles that we just made and these should provide a little bit more stability than the generic insoles. I can already feel in between my toes in this area that I'm, I'm, I'm touching the inner sole, which never happens on a regular insole. So I can feel the difference. Maybe you've already spotted the change to the new shoes and also Shimano cleats instead of the Luke cleats. I've been riding the SEO Matuo power meters for the last four years. And for this bike fit, I specifically swapped to a new set of pedal bodies just to be sure I would have a very good starting point. In a recent video, I introduced the Asioma Duo Sheep Power Meter, which is based on the Shimano pedal. I always preferred the Shimano cleats over look, but would this make a difference in this bike fit? And could they further improve my position since the different cleat was not the only difference between the two? I wanted to make sure and that could only be done by testing. We found in theory the, the, the most optimal position at the moment. And now we're going to change to the Asioma Shimano pedals. It could in theory improve it even further if you look at the, the movement of my foot and my knee. But maybe not. We're going to see. So here you can clearly see the difference of the Q factor, which is the, the width of the pedal. Where the Shimano pedal is wider than the original look version of the Asiomas. In certain cases it can be useful to have a bigger Q factor. But it's also very individual and it needs to be tested. So, swapping to the Asioma Duo Shi pedals and putting in the custom insoles changed a few things. My knees seem to be more stable, but my hips seem to be less stable. The pedals and the cleats are not the same in all ways. So the, the stack height of a cleat is how thick they are. And also this will decide your saddle height. Because if the cleat is thicker, your shoe will be higher and then the distance between your pedal and your seat will be smaller, right? So we're adjusting by two millimeters. I'm not gonna notice a difference, I think, by feel, but maybe we can see it in the data. Besides that, some stuff changed. Uh, some numbers look more stable, other numbers look less stable. Yeah, my body also needs time to adapt. To this change because it's, it is quite a change and I've been riding with the previous pedals for five years. Since we changed two variables at once we needed to figure out what caused these changes so we double checked the custom insoles with a regular Shimano pedal and with the original Asioma Duo pedals which both have the same Q factor. This showed a very stable position with an increased stability in my knees, so we could give that credit to the custom insoles. Heel duidelijk, okay? And now we've done another test with normal Shimano pedals. So the cleats are the same, but the only difference is the Q factor. And I'm back to being as stable as I was with the look version of the Asioma pedals with the same Q factor. So the difference is the Q factor. That's what we've been filtering out. Are you thinking what I am thinking? In your case, it is better, more narrow pedals. Can it be because I've been riding the normal Q factor for 10, 20 years, and now I change to a wider stance that it's less efficient because my body is not used to yes, it? Yes. It's so possible. maybe it can evolve to being yeah. as stable, but we don't know. No. For you, it was less stable and you were also moving a bit more in your hip, hip area again, so it was less efficient for you. Can you learn to ride with it? I am uh, convinced yes. A human body can adapt a lot, but your first result was already that good that it is not necessary to, to make any change. The main improvements were that you have more comfort, more symmetry, you will ride more efficient as well but i think most important is also that you can uh, save more energy for the last part of your race i think i have a confession to make i am one of those guys that thinks he's on the bike very good and it turns out it can be improved a lot so i'm very happy i came here to check out my bike fit i improved my stability finally i got to test out two different crank lengths Finally, I know what the Q factor is really changing in my bike fit. I've been riding the Asioma Loop version for five years. Don't change the winning team. Next stop, 
Hold root in the Alps, seven days of racing. I'm gonna take this bike with the optimized position. I'm gonna see you there. See ya!